let me share with us just a little amongst the things that the lord has told me that we should expect this year some of you will call it prophecies you call it whatever you want to call it but let me just share a few with you and some of these things god has already borne witness through all that trusted servants of his across the globe but i will share it anyway so that we can hear these things keep them to heart and walk with expectation you know it was not just one prophet in the old testament that prophesied the coming of jesus there were several prophets who prophesied it so god will always bear witness through the ministry of the prophetic to ensure that his people are not without excuse that they heard his counsel and the things that he's about to do to prepare them for it god will always bear witness through his servants he has a way of speaking through many mouths what he's saying so that his people are not without a witness now there might be some seasons of grievous hardship especially in nigeria there might be some seasons of grievous hardship that's what the lord told me the lord gave me this word in december last year that there might be some seasons of grievous hardship especially in nigeria but he said however multiple opportunities will emerge in the midst multiple opportunities will emerge in the midst and then god showed me how that in genesis chapter 7 verse 17 to 18 when you read it you discover that the flood waters that destroyed the earth was what elevated the ark did you hear what i said good so the same thing that is killing people and making people to suffer as we open our eyes to see it not not as a disaster but as an opportunity and we cash in by the wisdom of god that's the same season where his people will be elevated yes the bible says when men say there is a casting down you shall say what good this year let's depend on god though. I'm seeing what looks like a chart. This is stock exchange. And I'm seeing a lot of losses. Crashing of businesses here and there. This year, don't be surprised if you begin to hear mergers of companies. Or companies being sold. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, because of that word I gave about grievous seasons of hardships but multiple opportunities in the midst this is a word for us god said this will be the year of the josephs i've been saying this since last year some of you must have been hearing me this year will be the year of the josephs now listen listen to this one what it means is the wisdom of financial prudence and proactive measures in the face of opportunities that's what i mean that joseph there is a code so we will excel in the midst of the hardship that may come through financial prudency and proactive measures in the face of opportunities now you need to go if you don't know what proactive means go and find out it means when you see an opportunity and god has led you take a step immediately you move very swift when it is time to buy a land or buy this business or in, invest here why others are dealing dally about about it and you already you know by god that this is what to do you move into it quick and then you realize that one week later that becomes the thriving hub amen so that's what i mean by the joseph so take time study genesis chapter 40 chapter 41 and chapter 47 study the wisdom that joseph used to preserve the economy of egypt some of you are going to move from small scale to medium scale in business some of you are going to move from medium so you will need this kind of this is the wisdom for capacity are you hearing what i'm saying financial prudency last was it last year we, we did a series on financial dominion 
and we're talking about how to make manage and multiply money we saw the spiritual aspect of it the laws that govern it and then the physical aspect i told you that the spiritual laws make for the supply and the abundance why the natural laws makes for the sustainability and multiplication you because you know god blessed man and creation and said be fruitful and multiply so multiplication now has been seeded into the operation of natural laws so it's a combination of natural and spiritual laws that we call kingdom laws for you to excel in any field that god has planted you so this will be the year of the josephs for us so go and study about joseph very well and trust god to give you insight into wisdom because many people will explode in wealth this year mm -hmm. and sadly some people will leave the year still broke but my prayer is that they will not be amongst us here still for the nations we need to pray for peace we need to pray for peace and we need to pray against pestilence famine and diseases pestilence famine and diseases now watch the news this year you will hear of the outbreak of a disease you know recently we've been used to biological and chemical uh, weapons released as diseases and what i mean is diseases that were created in a lab and dispatched do you know that good but i saw a disease that broke out from an animal this year you will see it on the news i don't know if it's a virus or whatever but it will be from an animal so we need to pray against pestilence i i, I spoke about diseases in in december at the prophetic school and also at um, that nurse meeting good go on the news uh where which what part is it south asia or where europe yes europe and south asia i mentioned i think we'll get that video out so they see it's already there i spoke about war and insecurity and insurgency and i spoke about southern america and some parts of africa and in the news go and search on google now there are uprisings in ecuador ecuador is a nation in south america there is hell is on the rampage this year we need to pray for peace by all means by all means i'm talking about governments will come to a point where they are their wits end they failed what we don't know what to do about this situation again it's only the prince of peace that will give us peace but here's a good news for somebody as long as you remain in the will of god and you keep dwelling in the house of god no evil shall befall you yeah. now let's continue so we need to pray for peace among nations especially in nigeria and pray against pestilence famine famine and disease there's an african nation that will be hit with serious famine let's pray that god will preserve life because i saw children dying you see all these things on the news just write it and it's, it's online so it will be there you will see it on the news or pray that god will protect the christians in those nations now for the church this year There is a call to prayer intensity and selfless devotion to the things of God by the Holy Spirit. A call to prayer intensity and selfless devotion to the things of God. A call to prayer intensity and selfless devotion to the things of God. Jesus said, My house shall be called a house of what? prayer a call to prayer there is a grace of prayer like never i was 
talking with my spiritual father this afternoon and he was saying the same thing there is a call to the place of prayer there is a call to prayer every man must raise a personal altar of prayer to god every church must ensure that prayer becomes part and parcel of everything they do every family must have a, an altar of prayer raised up to god now let me say something and i know i may be stoned for it but you see i told you this year i don't care i'll just say the truth as it is now i thank god especially during the covid era and even into the post covid era i thank god that during that time maybe because the whole world was on shutdown and standstill many families were at home no church services and all of that god began to raise prayer platforms and then taking advantage of the media to connect his people and then you know to ensure that they stay revived so you find many prayer platforms in nigeria i don't want to mention names but you know because you are some of you are part of it and that is fine now i believe that the sole purpose for the establishment of these platforms was to ignite the spirit and the fire of prayer in god's people to ensure that the house of god is revived and in the midst of that revival god will begin to raise missionary manpower that he would deploy for the work and the advancement of his kingdom however it seems like we have shifted from that it has become an enterprise a business enterprise where people can make money from where people can and as i'm saying it there is so much pain in my heart as i'm saying this now it's all about how many thousand people you gather online praying it's all about how much you can make from it because after the prayers they'll give offering and as you are rising on your channel youtube will pay you this one will pay you that's why you pay. so when you when you scan now the prayers have become need driven they are no longer purpose driven so we pray so much in africa but we are seeing little effect you still find corruption in government now it's even our brothers and sisters that are representing us there in corruption the economy of nations are crumbling and we are praying so i need to understand what we are doing any prayer enterprise that is not targeted towards first of all the revival of the spirits of god's people and to ensure that the house of god remains a house of prayer other things like needs can become beneficial but if you if we make needs to become the center of it we are failed we're just raising carnal believers everywhere and you know we the men of god because they will testify and say the god of jonathan the god of this person and slowly but surely we are taking the praise and the glory of god for ourselves and you know we know how to spiritualize it and say hey, well, all glory to god you know and all of that it has to stop because what is coming in 2024 i don't care let it let it be online i don't care who's i've seen jesus so whether you stole me or you not if you stole me i'll die and go and meet him it just has to stop i'm not saying that it shouldn't continue but it's time for us to re-engineer what we do go back to the basics now yahoo frosters will join a prayer online and hoping that with their nonsense the bible says he that who shall ascend up to the hill of the lord psalms 24 he that hath clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully not people who will steal money and then come a, a, a lady is going out with a yahoo person and she's coming to church and submitting his name for prayers that God will bless him. God will bless in you, Kuti. Just look at how we've made a fool of the whole thing. That's why we're not seeing power in church again. That's why people come to church and they can't even sit for one hour. Because everything has become so carnal to the point where the flesh has taken over. It's time for us to return back to the basics. Jesus said, my house shall be a house of prayer not a den of thieves and god forbid this year that in all that i preach i don't point people back to god god forbid i, I trust god for crowd though i love many people but if 
the crowd doesn't come and I have a few people who are sanctified, who are saved, who are walking with God victorious in this life and are sure for heaven. I'm okay. Let's stop deceiving ourselves. This is the year for prayer. We need to pray. Nobody, don't sit somewhere and think somebody will pray for you. Everybody must pray. I'm even thinking of how to increase my retreat times this week, this, this year. If you don't have anything to pray, at least your destiny will not remain on the ground. God saved you to fulfill a mandate in his kingdom. It's either you stand up and begin to pray about it and release yourself into it by prayer or you sit down and nothing happens. There is nothing like luck in the kingdom. Nobody ever, ever builds a successful venture on luck. Never. Because if you, if you claim to build a successful venture on luck, where are the principles with which you can teach other people for them to replicate it regardless of place or time or geographical location? Do you understand what I said? If it is luck, the Bible calls it time and chance. I'm just, I'm just so, I'm sorry to use that word, but truly, I'm just so sick of the whole thing. I'm not saying don't pray, but is this all that there is? It's no longer about God. Intimacy first. First. Seek ye first the kingdom. And then every other thing can happen. Let's go on. God said this year, this is a year where the standards of holiness and righteousness must be exalted and upheld without compromise. This one, he told me this morning while I was writing. A year where the standards of holiness and righteousness must be exalted and upheld without compromise. Let's call sin, sin. Let's not call it testimony. Let's call it a sin. And return and repent before God. The Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundations of the Lord standed sure. Having this seal upon them, the Lord knoweth those who are his. Say, and let everyone that nameth the name of God depart from iniquity. I think that's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 and 20 or so. This is not a year for compromise. With all these things that I've shared with you that God will do, you can't live a life of compromise and see it happen. No. 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 We must, we must raise certain standards around our life and be strict. We are living in the last days of a godless generation. The Bible says, perilous times. That's where we are living in. Where men will be lovers of themselves. For goodness sake, now they have, they have brought same-sex marriage into the church. You are not aware? So a, a priest will stand and bless a man and a man. When the Bible says he made them male and female. You know, those days when we're not born again, when you hear these kind of things, you say thunder. <laughs> we are born again now. No, but I'm just I'm just being very frank. Even in ministry now, many ministers have sold their integrity for gain, for pleasure, no more. Integrity is the honor of priesthood. If God tells, rebukes me and tells me to come and warn us that day, guess what I'll do? I will come here and, and sound it to your ear. If God says, go and tell them, I'll bless them. Ah, you know now, I can do that one. But it's time for us to begin to embrace holiness. All these cutting corners, it has to stop. It has to stop. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. 1 John chapter 3, in verse 7, he says, Let no one deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Doeth righteousness. Okay, that standard must be raised. And then finally, still to the church, 
God will declare war against idolatry. Yes. God will declare war against what? You just watch this year. Well, well if you're on social media, it's already happening. So, watching something on social media recently, and I saw a pastor in, in the church, New Year Eve into New Year. They were dancing secular songs in church. And you see, let me tell you, the Bible says knowledge puffs up. You can use any part of the Bible to cover up your mess or to project or propagate evil. The pastor said uh, that he was preaching to them. A prophetic word came from the scriptures where Peter held that man at the beautiful gate and told him, rise up and walk and jacked him up. So, you know, sometimes you need to step out in faith and walk it out. And then they, they now entered into a secular song. And where that's how they dance into a new year. That's Babylon now. And he's a, he's a preacher who we used to sing his songs those days. Very powerful worshiper. Something is wrong in America. We need to pray for an America. I, I'm, I'm telling you, something is wrong. I didn't want to go to America, but now I'm ready to go. Yes, and the time will come where we'll move there. You just hold on, just wait. The reason why God must begin a revival in America, a very dangerous one, some of you will have to go there either for school or for, you know, all those things you are going to school or you are going there. It is just an excuse. It's God, God is sending you as a, a kingdom agent. Some of you are evangelists, apostles, prophets. God is sending you there. But if he knows, he knows that if he tells you go there and preach, you know go agree. So he entices you with a job. You go there and you are making money. Then one day, in your room, you see the burning bush. No, God knows how to encounter men. Let me tell you, something is wrong with. And if if it, if God doesn't do a cleansing in America very quick, it's going to come to Nigeria straight. Because if you check church history. Every revival, once it gets to America, the next place it comes to is Africa. And Nigeria is at the center. Uh, prosperity came from the church in America. If you read church history very, 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 very well. After the Great Depression, they had the healing revival from 1945, there about to 1955. After that, you had the charismatic movement. As they entered into the 1980s and 90s, where you had the Word of Faith movement, that was when the message of prosperity blossomed in the church so the american church were the first to experience prosperity that it is god's will that we prosper they found it but guess what as they sold it to us they had already corrupted their own prosperity gospel and we bought it too so now it's all about seed so that's why if god doesn't do a cleansing in america it's coming here straight ah why do you think the american artists now are trying to future nigerian artists in the secular if you at least you can look at the secular and know what's happening and some of you play all those nonsense nonsense songs in your phone this year no more if i catch you if you come he said it's just for entertainment just for entertainment keep entertaining babylon there you are wondering why you are having nightmares after a sound prayer. It's time to seek God. So God will declare war against idolatry. There's going to be a serious sanitization. Serious one. Serious one. So that the revival that God is about to bring will truly manifest. There's a part of that revival that if we don't see, then we can't call what we have revival. Where the church begins to influence government, all right? Where the authority of the church is recognized even by government. Until we see it, we don't have anything. Those days of men like Archbishop Benson in the house must return back. Must return back. Let me tell you something. This is the year to really be spiritual. Those of you that God gave you money to buy a car, thank God for that car. Now, there are speakers in that car. All day long, let there be some powerful worship songs. 
or praise songs playing there create your own atmosphere we are living in a very dangerous generation god gave you money to buy a car now you are playing i don't even know the name of the secular artist anything that god has given you that will not be deployed in the service of god has become a curse to you and has become an insult to the face of god just take it like that idolatry is not necessary an image that you build or you mold. no anything that competes with the place of god not even take the place of god because hello satan's intention right from the rebellion was not to dethrone god he knows he can't he knows he can't he just wanted to be a parallel option from god that you can put god side by side with him god said i will share my glory with no man anything that competes with the place of god in your life has become an idol some of us our jobs have become idols some of us the money that god gave you and you know you are just any few hundreds of thousands now i wonder if god pushes you into millions what you will do you will just go back into the world i've seen people that god has blessed them and they now became stingy both to god and to themselves you have to decide this year you have to decide this year anything that god will give me that will not glorify him or be used for him it's better he doesn't give me at all it's better he doesn't give me at all enough of all the drama that we've been doing in the house of god we must bring spirituality again nothing must take god's place or compete with god's place don't be too busy not to pray and spend time with God. Don't be too busy not to study the word of God. At least study it once in a week. But read every day. That's why you have a desk in your office. It's not only files you can put on that desk. Put your Bible there. You have tablets. You have Android. You have iPhone. You have everything. Why don't you put a Bible there? Oh, I'm so busy. I, I can't even read the Bible. there and play it when you are sleeping. This is the year where we must be serious with God and create an atmosphere around your life. Know God for yourself.